it's time now for the big story. And migrants could be moved from hotels to disused ferries as part of government plans to cut costs, this according to reports. More than 50,000 migrants are currently staying in hotels in the UK at a cost of around £7 million a day. However, Rishi Sunak will reportedly declare the beginning of the end of asylum hotels in the coming weeks. According to the Daily Telegraph, migrants will be moved into decent but rudimentary accommodation in former military bases that will be used to house adult males. It also claimed that the government may house more migrants in ferries to cut costs. And that's what's made the headlines. So is this the right thing to do? And will it work to discuss this? Let's talk to lawyer, former UKIP MEP and the director of the Centre for Migration and Economic Prosperity, Stephen Wolfe. Hi, Stephen. Good evening, Mark. How are you? Uh, very well. Your reaction, please, Stephen, to the suggestion that migrants could be housed on ferries. Well, my first reaction is it's, it's lawful. It doesn't breach the UN Refugee Convention. And it enables the government to introduce a policy that brings a broader spectrum of housing for the 51,000 asylum applicants that are currently being housed in hotels across the country, nearly 400 hotels. So it's a welcome opportunity to be able to reduce the costs and still keep ourselves within international law. And do you think that this policy will work? Will it be a disincentive accommodating people in ferries? Uh, could it break the business model of those criminal gangs? I'm not so certain that it would actually break the business model because the people are still here and the business model is very important in order to get people to the UK, whether they're staying in hotels or on camps. The idea is to make sure they get here. The real business model breaking is if Rishi Sunak's plan for immigration, being able to take them immediately within 28 days and take them to other places like Rwanda. And on a recent call that we had with the Home Office, who were giving us a briefing on this, they have informed us that they, they will be looking at further deals with other countries and possibly other British protectorates. And they will be a part of a key answer to breaking that business model. Uh, many would characterise these ferries as effective prison ships, Stephen. Uh, do you think that accommodating migrants at sea, as it were, is unethical and cruel? I don't think it's unethical or cruel, because if you look at the UNHCR's uh, particular responses to dealing with the 103 million people who were displaced, Mm. 32 and a half million people are asylum across the globe. You'll see them in hot countries in Africa, in tented communities where they are in very hot places, but being have to looked after in tents. So what is the difference between having a tented community and someone going onto a ferry? The idea is, is it safe? Do they have good sanitary? Is it a place that they will be able to keep warm? Is it got the opportunity for them to be able to talk to their lawyers and make the applications. All of those will be still available to them. It's just that it won't be in a hotel. It might be on a camp or it might be on a ferry. Stephen, this policy of potentially accommodating migrants on ferries is part of a nexus of arrangements uh, that have been uh, outlined by the prime minister who wants to stop the boats. Together, will they work these, these measures? I think they're going to have some positive impacts in trying to dissuade people to use the, the people smugglers. People smugglers business model over the last four years has been able to say, you pay us up to around £12,000, we'll get you onto a, fer uh, onto a boat, you'll get into the UK and immediately you'll be looked after, claim asylum, getting a hotel, and we know that you will never be deported and never removed. Rishi Sunak's laws that he's introducing and the policies that go with them and the procedures that will also be in place will mean now that, that after 28 days, most of them will have the opportunity of being removed from the UK. So if you're going to pay £12,000 and know that you could go to Rwanda or another country, that's a nail in the coffin for the people smugglers. And it's going to make it harder for them to persuade people that they can get them over with ease. Stephen, will the United Kingdom ultimately have to exit the European Convention on Human Rights in order to stop the boats? 
I think that's going to be a really tricky question, Mark, because I looked at this and I was deeply surprised in initially that they, the lawyers, the government lawyers, and I do admit they've worked tremendously hard and done a successful job to keep us within the UN Co- Convention on Refugees, the mm. ECHR and the Human Rights Act, and still have policies that remove some of the appeal rights and also remove people from the country. Where the tricky point will come is if there are appeals in the UK that's based on the uh, ECHR and the ECHR steps in, even though they've said that they won't. At that point, that becomes a trigger point for Rishi Sunak, because he has said if the ECHR steps in and tries to oppose us, we will remove it. I think people are going to be smart on both sides. The European uh, bodies will not want to see Britain leave the ECHR and nor do most people in government. So they'll find a balance through the courts. Uh, The boats won't be stopped overnight. I think we can agree on that, Stephen. But what might success look like for Rishi Sunak in a year's time when he faces the country? I think the estimate of 80,000 people coming over this year, which is a deep concern. And you look at the cost, Mark, that's going to be around four billion pounds to the exchequer. Mm. Success for him will be seeing less than that. I would expect at least 50 percent and a big reduction in those in hotels and a big reduction in those coming across the waters. But key to that is visibly seeing people being deported. Uh, I've been asking on Twitter, Stephen, our viewers and listeners, whether they think the Home Secretary Suella Braverman was right to accommodate migrants on ferries. Well, the votes are in. 80 percent said, yes, it's the right policy. 20 percent say no. Your reaction? Most people think that's a good answer because they are Mm. seeing in their communities and we know we know for a fact that for every five uh, channel migrants that are coming to the country, they're in the north of England and the poorest areas and only one are in the, the south in the richest areas. So those people are suffering the impact on schools, hospitals and in the communities. And that's why people really feel strongly about this, is that there is a need to deal with this. And if it's meant on ferries, then I think most people are going to actually agree with it. Good to see you again, Stephen. Thanks so much for coming on the show.